Aloha everyone, welcome to Skincare with Hiram. If you don't know who I am, my name is Hiram and I'm passionate about teaching you how to perfect your skincare routine. So make sure you subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week. And you know what, vibes, it feels like I haven't done a reaction video in a while. <laughs> I'm so sorry, that started out as an Essex accent and somehow it converted to Australian. I can't even explain it myself. What is going on? I just watched the video by Brittany Broski where she was transforming herself into an Essex girl and as much as I want to do that accent, oh, for some reason I just don't know how to and it always converts into Australian accent. I don't know why all roads lead to Australia. Anyway, in today's video, I'm going to be reacting to someone that I am so, so, so excited to see, Sydney Sweeney. Now, honestly, if it was just even a month ago, I would have had no idea who this person is and if you guys have watched my reaction videos before, you know that my knowledge of celebrities in movies and TV shows is... It's non-existent. I don't watch TV shows and movies. I really only watch TikTok and YouTube. But recently I decided to start seriously watching the show Euphoria and oh my god. Oh my god. That show is incredible. I mean, first off, it's HBO. And when has HBO ever made a shitty show? I mean, my favorite show of all times is Game of Thrones. And now Gossip Girl's on HBO, so... They can do no wrong in my eyes. And in case you didn't know, Sydney is from Euphoria. And I started the show because I had seen one episode and I was like, oh my god, the videography is beautiful, the way they depict it. I love Zendaya. She is stunning. I stand her so hard. So I was like, oh, I need to just actually give the show a chance. And we are now here, where that show is my religion. I pray to it every morning and night. I love Euphoria. She's an icon. She's a legend and she is the moment. And I understand that it is kind of a controversial show. Like I get that it is depicting teenage lives in a very explicit way. And I've heard a lot of people complaining about Euphoria and I just have to say to those people, were you ever a teenager? Because what they show in that show is exactly what it was like for me growing up. That type of shit is what everyone was doing. And in my opinion, they actually take a little bit of a conservative approach because the stuff I saw growing up was way, way, way worse. If you follow me on TikTok, you will have seen my TikTok talking about some of my middle school experiences. And those are just like the good experiences. That's not even the bad, bad experiences. The point is growing up and being a kid and being a teenager and growing into adulthood is fucking hard. And the amount of shit you have to see every day is insane. And anyone who says that show is unrealistic, in my opinion, just hasn't experienced real life. Congratulations, boo, you lived in a bubble because that's reality. And I love that show because I think it does a really good job of showing the dangers of drug abuse, the emptiness of relentlessly seeking out sex out of insecurity while also showing sex in a positive way where it's about empowerment. You have gorgeous videography. Oh, I love that show so much. Talented, brilliant, incredible, amazing, show-stopping, spectacular. Okay, <laughs> I don't know why this is turning into a round about how much I love Euphoria. Let's get into this skincare routine because Sydney Sweeney recently did a skincare routine with Vogue, Harper's Bazaar? Vogue, she did a skincare routine with Vogue. It's called Euphoria's Sydney Sweeney's Guide to Sensitive Skincare and Soft Glam. Sensitive skincare? That's my shit. I'm also ready to see what her personality is like off camera, out of character, because I really don't much about her, but she's a gorgeous girl and I cannot wait. Um, Vogue also petition to have every single Euphoria character on your channel doing their skincare routine because if Maddie from Euphoria did hers, I would actually be deceased. If you don't know me, I've worked as a skincare specialist, but I am not a licensed esthetician or a dermatologist, nor do I ever claim to be. That is not moi. That's not my path. And these videos are not meant to be professional or medical advice. If you are struggling with your skin in any serious way, please go see your esthetician or dermatologist to get that shit treated. I make these videos for fun to talk about skincare, just for reaction. Just have some fun and chat about skincare. It's not meant to be taken seriously. Hey guys, it's Sydney Sweeney and I am going to walk you through my skincare routine and my go-to soft glam makeup look. So, oh, she's so cute. I have really sensitive, horrible combination skin and oh, if too. I don't mix a exfoliant and a gel cleanser, Ooh. my skin doesn't let makeup sit on my face. It continually just splits and I have to redo my makeup throughout the day. Really? It took me a while to that actually That must be really find... hard as an actress. Especially with Euphoria. I forgot to mention the makeup in this show. Oh, beautiful. Ah, sorry, I almost spilled my coffee. <laughs> The makeup in Euphoria is incredible, but they do wear a lot of it. So I'm sure that's really frustrating for either her or her makeup artist. But I feel you, girl. I have combination skin too, and it's frustrating. Sometimes it feels like literally nothing works for your face because your skin is either too oily or too dry. It took me a while to actually find the cleansers that would work for me. I would watch as many videos, as many tutorials. That's and good. And I finally, actually in the last like year and a half, found these two. So I kind of just mixed the two. What are they though? <laughs> 
Okay, so she doesn't use frothing cleansers. Let's see. Um. Oh, thank God, Vogue actually linked the products. Okay, so she uses the Côte d'Elive, you know, clean, deep cleansing exfoliator. Okay, so if this is the scrub exfoliant that I think it is, I might be okay with this one. I know a scrub. It's shocking, but oh, okay, never mind. This isn't. This isn't what I thought it was. Côte d'Elive does have a scrub that's based in a cream, and it's actually really, really gentle. I've used it before, and I was like, oh, okay, this isn't that bad. But they also have a different scrub that actually is a lot more harsh and feels like an actual scrub and I believe that's what this one is. Yeah I believe so. It says it has natural plant microbeads which is you know better than plastic microbeads but still you know if you guys haven't watched my videos my position on scrubs is like yes they work but they are far from the best thing out there in my opinion and I actually really think that chemical exfoliants are much better particularly for sensitive skin. Sydney I'd be curious if you've ever used a polyhydroxy acid product. Polyhydroxy acids are similar to other chemical exfoliants but they tend to be way less irritating on people's skin but just as effective in removing the dead skin cells from your face and I'm always recommending polyhydroxy acids to people with really sensitive skin so if you haven't tried the Ankylis polyhydroxy acid toner Geez, why am I saying polyhydroxy acid so much? I can just say PHA. <laughs> the Ankylis PHA toner is amazing. This one's my personal favorite PHA product, but you can also find it in like the Sun By Me AHA BHA PHA toner or moisturizer. They tend to be very gentle and really good for sensitive skin. I mean, personally, I will say I would never recommend a scrub to someone who has really sensitive skin. However, she did say that she has been looking for a good cleansing system for a long time, for a year and a half, and she finally found this. So I'm gonna cross my fingers and hope that she's not scrubbing every day and just does it like once a week. Stick with that pattern. I wouldn't recommend using it anymore just so you don't over exfoliate your skin. But I'm also curious to see what she mixes it with because she mixes it with another cleanser. It is the Avene Cleanance Cleansing Gel. Let's look at this. Oh, okay, I do recognize this one. You know, Avene is one of those brands where I have like mixed feelings about, like technically I don't really have a problem with them, but I do think that sometimes they're overpriced for what they actually deliver, but you know, it just depends on the product. Um. Oh, okay, so this has an ingredient called Zinc Cosith Sulfate. That is a cleansing agent that I'm actually not really familiar with. If you guys are familiar with that cleansing agent, let me know because I don't know if it's stripping or not. Um, it has fragrance, but you guys know I'm okay with fragrance in a cleanser because it is a wash off treatment. Overall, this doesn't look like an overly stripping cleanser, but it does have green dye. The fragrance is perfume, which sometimes can be more irritating and it has yellow dye as well. It also has isopropyl alcohol, but you know, that's kind of lower on the ingredient list. So I, I don't have a problem with that. I wouldn't necessarily say this is the best cleanser for someone with really, really sensitive skin. Um, if you are looking for a good cleanser for really sensitive skin, honestly, CeraVe cleansers are great because they won't strip the skin. They have ceramides or there are cleansers with exfoliants. Like actually this one right here from my Kinship kit. If you guys are interested in getting my Kinship kit, it's still on sale. You can find it in the description box below. This one's formulated with papaya and which is a gentle enzymatic exfoliant to get rid of the dead skin cells on your face, but in a very gentle way. And this one is a nice experience. I really enjoy it. It's great if you have, I'd say, normal skin and don't want to overly strip your skin. And it's nice because you get the exfoliating benefits without having to mix two products in one. But I will say this isn't like the worst cleanser I've seen, but I have seen better from Avene, so eh, it's, it's okay. Here's the thing I will say though, for people who have really sensitive skin, like skin that breaks out just so much, I also have to realize, I'm like, who am I for someone who has gone through the journey of trying so many different products, nothing works, everything's breaking them out, and they finally do find products that really work well. Who the hell am I to say that you shouldn't use that? This is just based off of my opinions. If those products have worked for her and she's tried so many other things and nothing is working, totally respect it, totally understand, I get that. This is more just in general, I probably wouldn't purchase these products or use them on my fifth. After I wash my face, I always put a serum on that kind of helps ah. soak in all of the skincare products before I put on my makeup to protect my skin from the makeup. Yes, oh my gosh, and she doesn't touch it to her fingers. We love to see it. Okay, I can tell this girl watches some YouTube videos, tutorials, she's watching someone. Good for her, that's the Ordinary Niacinamide Serum. I've recommended it on my channel many a times. Niacinamide is an amazing ingredient, particularly if you have more oily or sensitive skin. It balances the amount of sebum you're producing while also reducing redness and irritation in the skin. It's very simple, but does what it's supposed to do. And one of the issues I see with a lot of people is that they touch the dropper to their fingers, which means the bacteria from your fingers goes into the bottle and sits there and makes the formula potentially go bad. So I'd love to see the education. Oh my God, here I am. <laughs> I'm embarrassed. That was not the niacinamide serum. That is the hyaluronic acid serum from The Ordinary. Another good product. Hyaluronic acid is great if you're really looking for hydration. It's not niacinamide necessarily, and hyaluronic acid doesn't really do anything to like reduce sensitivity in the skin, but it's great for hydrating the skin, for plumping it. It feels nice. That's also a good product. <coughs> that is 
disgusting. I use the Skin Cuticle CE oh, from like okay. Serum. Growing Fonsa. up, my skin was all over the place. I have really sensitive combination skin, and so I would break out in horrible cystic acne. Oh, it wow, was to cystic. the point that I would beg my mom not to send me to school, and I was oh, just no. super self conscious, and it was hard finding products that worked for me, that didn't break me out, that didn't make me red. And it was kind of like this very long journey that I kind of oh, just had to That's stay rough. on board wow. for and figure it all out. And I finally found products that work for me, even though I still still do break out because my yeah, skin I mean, is sensitive normal. and I work a lot, so I wear a lot of makeup. But being able to really focus on taking care of the skin and the products helps calm it all down. Um, okay, so this girl sounds like she has been around the block at every single skincare store trying everything she can, um, which I respect. Like, it takes a lot of work to find what really works for your skin, and sometimes your skin is just weird, and it likes products that a lot of people don't like, or a lot of people wouldn't recommend, and that's just kind of the way it goes. The Skin SkinCeuticals one is so popular. I mean, it's great for brightening the skin. It has ingredients that are personally sensitizing to my skin, but overall, I understand the functionality of the formula. I think it is a good formula, and very much based on science and effectiveness. It's one of those products that's pricey, but honestly, so many people recommend it that I would say it's kind of within that tier where I'm like, you know what? I would justify spending money on this. I find it interesting that vitamin C and ferulic acid help to clear up her acne um, because those typically aren't ingredients that necessarily directly help with that, but everyone's skin is different. Sometimes that is helpful. I typically go the route of recommending salicylic acid or benzoyl peroxide. Those are great acne treating ingredients, but I guess that wasn't her journey. Her skin looks so clear though, so honestly, I would not have guessed she struggled with cystic acne, but that's testament to how much time and work she's invested into her skin, which I really respect. Being able to really focus on taking care of the skin and the products helps calm it all down. Next, I put eye cream on and- <gasps> Oh my gosh! I actually just recently got into eye cream. So when I was in 10th grade, I- Girl, that is not just eye cream. That is eye cream. <laughs> um, That's from the brand Sisley. If you're not familiar with Sisley, that is boo -gee. Sisley is very expensive. It's one of those luxury brands that's like one of the most expensive from my understanding. Like back when I used to look at a luxury department store, I saw people drop thousands of dollars on Sisley products and always wondered why, because <laughs> that is so expensive. Um, particularly luxury eye creams are kind of the bane of my existence. I do not understand the hype with luxury eye creams because technically an eye cream isn't even necessary in a skincare routine. You can have it, it can help with certain things, like it can sometimes be beneficial, but you should not be spending a lot of money on an eye cream, especially that price point, because I believe that's from their Black Rose collection. They have a Black Rose mask that's really, really, really popular. Overall, Sisley isn't the worst luxury brand I've ever discovered, but they hack their products with fragrance and they're just really overpriced. So I would not recommend, especially an eye cream. Whew, goodness. You know, actually looking at her routine, it is pretty luxury so far. Besides the Ordinary Hyaluronic Acid Serum, all of the products she's used are kind of considered luxury, so. Huh, it's a little bit of an expensive routine. Just for shits and giggles, I actually wanna see how much that eye cream costs and I'm really scared. <laughs> oh, $158. So it's their eye contour fluid. I'm pretty sure it's like one ounce, maybe. Oh my God, not even, it's 14 milliliters. I'm not even half of an ounce for $158. That's so expensive. Yeah, that's, um way too much. No thank you, no bueno. And I actually just recently got into eye cream. So when I was in 10th grade, I tried to put toothpaste all over my face because I read somewhere that if you put toothpaste on your face, it would make your acne go away. And I had the worst reaction to that you could possibly have. And my surprised. zits were horrible to the point that I ended up putting band-aids all over my face and I went to school like that. Oh no! So, oh my don't god. Don't try that if you have really sensitive skin. <sighs> okay, I, I don't know about her, but I would be so embarrassed to go to school like that. Holy shit. I would just stay home for a week. I'd drop out. I feel bad. Oh, poor thing. Um, yeah, that's exactly the reason why I don't recommend these DIY treatments because while yes, sometimes DIY treatments work for some people, when they don't work, most people 
I know have horrible reactions like that. It's, it's terrible. And toothpaste is not formulated for the skin. I don't care what you say. I do not recommend it. Please use a proper spot treatment like the Inculus succinic acid treatment or one of my personal favorites, the Clinique spot clearing gel. There's so many better options out there. I'm sorry, Sydney. Wow. Next, I'm going to use this face cream. Oh, it is one okay. of the only creams that I found that helps my skin keep makeup in place. I actually mm. like using a Quite like a nice, wow. generous Wow, yeah, she dab. uses a lot. <laughs> Cause that cream is slick. I've actually reacted to that moisturizer and other celebrity skincare routines. Um, It's very simple, it's very basic, but it's a very thick, rich cream. And it's interesting that she says she has combination skin because I would typically recommend that product for people who have severely dry skin because of how heavy it is. But she said it helps keep her makeup in place. And I guess, you know, if she is wearing more mattifying makeup, then that could definitely help even it out. I mean, if anything, it's better to have more moisture than less moisture. Very interesting routine. A lot of the products that she's going in with, I would not say are necessarily for combination skin. That, I usually put sunscreen on. Hey. This is the only sunscreen that I have found that doesn't break me out. I used really? to be terrified of sunscreen because it would just give me rashes. I would just break out everywhere on my body and on my face. Wow. And so I actually she went really to has sensitive using skin. It, and I realized that that's not a good idea. Like a little dab. I hope she applied more than that little amount. <laughs> That's my only thing. But that sunscreen is very popular. So many celebrities swear by it. I see it pop up all the time. It's not a sunscreen I personally would recommend because it does include... <clears throat> Have I been drinking? I've been drinking. I've been drinking. <laughs> Beyonce, sweetie, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. No, actually, if you do want to see me go drink, I actually recently uploaded a tipsy skincare routine video that was a lot of fun. So if you guys want to see me drink, Go watch that. What does that have to do with this video? It does not. Keep focused, Hiram. I personally don't use that sunscreen because it does include one chemical UV filter that I'm personally not a fan of, but I will say so many people love it. So many people with sensitive skin have noticed that it's really beneficial. And in relation to other chemical sunscreens that I've seen, it's definitely probably the least irritating, which is one of the main reasons I avoid chemical sunscreens in the first place. So it's definitely not the worst. And honestly, when it comes to celebrity skincare routines, I'm always just happy to see them using sunscreens. And it's funny, a lot of you guys have talked to me in the past about how sunscreens break you out. And it's interesting because chemical sunscreens tend to be the most irritating, but a lot of people can have sensitivities to mineral sunscreens. And a lot of times it does just come down to trial and error and seeing what works for your skin and what doesn't. So I'm glad she's found something that does. I started only drinking water when I was about 13 years old and it has helped me tremendously, especially oh. now as I got okay. older with my skin. I can tell if I'm drinking enough water or not. Really? And if I'm not, my skin feels drier and duller. And when I drink more, it's, it helps it glow uh, and it's healthier. Oh, that's cool. I mean, there's no scientifically justified link between water consumption and clear skin. Yes, water will help your overall health. So drink water, bitch. But I always hesitate and kind of fight back against the statement that like, just drink water. It'll clear your skin up. It'll get rid of your acne. There's just not enough evidence to prove that. But if she has noticed a link within her own skin, it's kind of like for me, I have noticed when I eat candy, my skin always breaks out, like always. And there have been some studies that show that sugar consumption can increase acne and breakouts within the skin. But for me personally, I've noticed that that's always the case, even if it's not the case for other people. So with her, her skin may benefit from drinking a lot of water, but regardless, we all should just be drinking a lot of water. We gotta be hydrated up in this bitch. So I do my skincare. I put on some Burt's Bees chapstick. Oh, okay. I literally have one of these in every single purse. You know, funny enough, if you guys watched my Burt's Bees review video, that was one of the only products I actually liked from Burt's Bees. But yeah, I mean, it works. It's good. It's a good lip balm. It's not the best I've ever used, but the ingredients aren't terrible. Wow, that was nice, short, and sweet. I loved that. Um, What are my thoughts on the routine? Overall, I think, honestly, it's a pretty stellar routine. She goes in with all the necessary steps. She goes in with her proper cleansing, treatment, moisturizing, and sunscreen. Overall, she does use pretty good products. That, the products I'm not a fan of is the scrub and the Sicily eye cream for obvious reasons. But the rest of the products she uses, I actually quite like, and I think there's a lot of good reasoning as to why she specifically has chosen those products, in addition to the fact that those seem to be the only ones that really work for her skin. If she's really struggled with cystic acne and her skin looks like that now, then that is a testament to how well these products perform on her skin. I would say the 
unnecessary one is the Sisley eye cream. Like, girl, you do not need to spend that much money on an eye cream. That is just ridiculous. But who knows? Maybe Sisley sent her their line. Everyone wants a piece of Euphoria. I wouldn't blame them. But if I recommend any substitute products for the scrub specifically, honestly, just get the Cods of the Cream Lotion Scrub. It's way more gentle. Feels nice on the skin. Doesn't overly scrub your skin. Or just use a cleanser like the one I was talking about before that has an exfoliant and a cleanser in one product. It skips an extra step, which means less ingredients overall, which means less likelihood for sensitivity. But yeah, what do you guys think? of this routine let me know in the comment section down below and let me know who you want me to react to next i always love doing these reaction videos and hopefully we can put enough pressure on vogue to have the rest of the cast featured on their channel as well but maybe that's just me hoping and praying because god knows i will be and if you guys haven't already be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit the notification bell so that you can see my videos every single week and i'll see you guys in the next one Mwah.